Welcome back to another episode, guys. Thank you for the last one. I, I read some really good comments, but I gather today's video from my experience of being here every day at the shop and some of the obstacle we go in. So today I'm gonna bust a bunch of BMX myth for you guys. The first thing is the chain, guys. Not just your ordinary chain. If you guys notice, it is a half-link chain. And a lot of you guys out there are gonna still shake your head and say no. People think you need a half-link chain breaker or some specialty chain breaker. You do not. I do not know how many half-links we sell and installed here. Every day, day in, day out. You could just use a regular chain breaker. I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys. Break a chain. Remember, hold this thing down so it doesn't move. Rest it against there. Back this thing out. Break the chain, okay? I'm gonna put the chain back. Rest it on there. Make sure you hold the chain down here so it doesn't go out. There you guys go. Told you you could do it. Now, some of you guys might be like, oh, you know what? Now, I know Shadows Conspiracy, they have a specialty chain breaker for that. Yes, it works. And most of the time when a company design a chain or they design a part and they design a tool, it's best. But I'm not saying that the only thing, we do use this chain breaker, this, the Park Tool CT3, point, what is it, point three. But any one and one eight chain breaker could break this or the shadow one, okay? So that is a myth that bust. You do not need a special chain breaker. Next one is tires. What is Fu gonna talk about? What is he talking about? Is he gonna put a 20 inch tire into a 29? No, that's not gonna work. Come on, don't get dumb. If you look at the tread, if you look at the tread, what do you notice? The tread is directional. A lot of you guys think that, hey, you know what? Look at this, look at this idiot. He installed it backward. Guys, is Ethan's bike here? No, no, he isn't, he took it. Ethan, it's, it's his thing. I know some of you guys is also your thing, but he runs the front facing forward, the back facing backward. Why? He's just a goofball. He rolls backward a lot, so he figured he wants to do that. He rolls forward too. So people will be like, no, you can't do that. Guys, on a car, it is different. On a car, you're going high speed. The way they engineer is different. These are bicycle tires. You're not going high speed. If you put this thing on backward, let's say in the front, and you're going that direction, it's okay. It's okay. The tire's not going to blow out. The tire's not going to slow you down. It is 100% okay. You could save this clip. Save this clip going, look, Foo, you said it, you're wrong. Trust me, you can. I've known people that rode vert, and you know how fast those guys go. High PSI, it is perfectly okay. The other thing about tire while I'm on it, is if you notice this Sunday one, there's a lot of little grooves, a lot of little tread. People think that, hey, in order to ride dirt, you got to have all these knobs, all these little grooves. If you're running this, you can't run dirt, okay? Guys, you can. Alf, can you go grab me the, the fast and loose? Thank you, my man. Look at this tire right here. The center is slick. The outside's a little knobby. Guys, I'm not sure if any of you guys follow Max Vu. Yo, Larry, put some shit on the radio, dog. He rides everything. He has a set of trails that he, he built. He, he, he loves going to skate park. You go look at his coat edit where he rode the street with it. It's on the same tire. From dirt to street, wood, whatever you want it, he's on the same tire. You're not gonna slip nowhere. So contrary to belief, you can, okay? You do not need the knobs. The next thing, it's one of those myths that people believe. If you notice it says 20 by four and a quarter. Does that mean, yeah, see, that's a really fat tire. This is for one of those uh, Super 73. Does that mean you could only use it on tire that is rated 20 by four and a quarter? No. You know how many times we have sold customer 
these cold tubes right here. I don't know if you guys can see. Can you see that, Elf? Yep. 20 by 2.1 by 2.4. How many times people are like, hey, hey, buddy, you sold me the wrong tube. Uh, I, I'm looking for 1.95. That's too much tube. It won't fit. Or, or customer come in. What's that say? 1.5. You know, hey, you gave me a 1.5. I need something that it will fit 2.4. Um, Guys, the 1.5, the 2.4, it will fit. It will. Well, foo, then why do they make these sizes? I know, I know. I don't know how to explain it to you, but it will fit. Why don't they just make one size fit all? Just trust me, it'll fit. You know why? What size do you think this is, guys? What size? Look, this is a 20 inch. This is a 20 inch tire. This is an 18 by 1.5. This is an 18, 18 inch tube, guys. Look, when, when this tube is pumped up inside this tire, it can't go this much bigger. The tire itself, when you pump it up, it will contain it. That's what makes it hard because the tube is trying to, trying to escape. This is an 18 inch. People really don't think it'll work. If you guys scroll all the way back, we did one where we put a 16 inch tube into a 20. Guys, how many guys have done that? Comment in. How many guys have been in an emergency? You can't get one and you knew the trick. You went out and just got a, a smaller tube and put in. Guys, we have also put in a 26 inch inner tube into a 20. You just tuck it in there. If it fits, it will go. We have done it out of testing. A 2.4, we put in a 2.2. It will fit. This right here, I'm not sure if you notice how big this is. This is bigger than 2.4. So if you guys look, could anybody explain to me why it doesn't inflate all the way like this? If they made it thinner, they made it thicker. I mean, that's quality control. I never understood that. All the years I've pumped this up, I've never understood that. But guys, if this area right here could, could get up this fat, that is a four, four and a quarter. So that means this, this tuber, this 18 inch tube could do this. Trust me guys, the people that really know us, you guys know we mess around here. We've played around with stuff. It will work, okay? So the next thing is bikes. Okay, let's say you were gifted a bike. Are you gonna be like, no nah, man, I don't want it. It's not the bike I want. No, you've been gifted. Be appreciative, take it in. But let's say what happened if they give you a trails bike. What does that mean? Typically, if you want to get it on a technicality, a trail bike, the back end's long, front end's a little bit longer, the standover is a little bit higher, the, st the, the steering, Alf, it's a little bit more loose. loose, right? A little bit more mellow, okay? Oh, you're like, wow, dude, I'm so thankful, but, ah, man, I ride street. Guys, we did, we did a video about this. You can, you can ride street with it. Our little homie, REA, the one that rides for s &M, that kid is a street savage. The back end of his bike, it is 14 inches long. The front end is, I think, 21 and a quarter. The top is very tall, but he rides street. Yeah, granted, he's a tall kid, but still. What if they gave you this bike? You got gifted. Remember, guys, you got gifted. It was free, okay? Beggars can't be choosers, all right? And you're like, oh, dude, that's so sick. But dude, I wanted a, I wanted a street. This is a park bike. Oh, uh, park. What is the park bike? It's got gyro. Short back end. You know, low standover. Again, if you want to speak for argument's sake, yes, those are park geometry. Somebody's gonna go there and go. I can't ride street with this. Oh, I can't take that and ride trails with it. You can, open up your eyes, you can. Street riding isn't, isn't the equipment. Street riding is what you do. Street riding is you're gonna take that park bike, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna do a handrail. You're gonna do a ledge, okay? You're gonna wall ride. You could do that in a park, that's all been built. The trails, same thing. When you're at the trails, you jump transition. When you do, when you go trail, there are some trails out there you can see 
where they build it, where you could jump and you could actually hit like a wooden wall. What's the difference from hitting the wooden wall on a dirt jump versus a, a bank to wall? It's all the same. You guys gotta get that out of your mind. So yes, guys, contrary to belief, you can take a trail bike and ride park. You can take a park bike and ride trails. Or you could take these bike and ride street, okay? Guess what? People have been doing a lot of wheelies, right? We've, we've had a couple of people come in going, yeah, I want a wheelie. I can't do it on my 20, of course. Ethan hops on it, Ethan's doing wheelies, dragging his hand going, what are you talking about? I can but it's not a wheelie bike, Ethan. Really? Wheelie? <laughs> you can do a wheelie on anything. I've seen guys wheelie on a road bike. So no, you do not need a wheelie bike to do wheelie. So my point is, guys, there are a lot of stuff, they're labeled one thing. That does not mean that you have to keep it like that. There's other ways to explore it. You guys get it? Guys, could some of you guys comment in? Because it actually, like a lot of this stuff is what we face when we work it, but I know there's a lot out there. Could you guys comment in? What are other like myths that people think but it actually isn't on the bike or anything. Comment it in, cause I'm interested. I know a lot of people are interested in and we'll share it next time. Okay guys, you guys give it a thumbs up, share this, subscribe guys, subscribe. I see the number getting up so I know you guys are listening to me. Thank you guys.